The United States Air Force admits that between 1952 and 1969, they conducted a study, codenamed Project Blue Book. Its purpose was to determine if UFOs posed a real threat to the American people. Project Blue Book concluded they did not, and since 1969, the Pentagon has denied participating in any other UFO study. But ufologists believe this is a lie. They point to evidence of a monumental conspiracy designed to hide what the government knows and when it knew it. Our government has flat out lied to us for 40 years or more. They've threatened people and intimidated people. They've spied on UFO groups, infiltrated UFO groups, spied on researchers, compiled dossiers. Their response is bordered on paranoia. In 1988, Reporter George Knapp of Las Vegas CBS television station KLAS began investigating the U.S. government's involvement with UFOs. He says he's found evidence proving a massive cover-up that began in 1947 and continues to this day. The CIA says that it does not collect information on UFOs, and it hasn't since the 50s. There are reams of documents squeezed out of the CIA that indicate that they have on staff CIA UFO experts, agency personnel monitoring the situation on an ongoing basis. The FBI denied having any documents on UFOs in the 1970s, the early 1970s. Three years later, they released 1,700 pages of information on UFOs, documents that they had. They lie. But for UFO researchers, there is one persistent problem with those hundreds of released pages. Most, like this 1958 UFO memo to President Eisenhower, have been highly censored, essentially making them unreadable. Even this National Security Agency document explaining why UFO data should remain secret is itself almost entirely blacked out. Ironically, the official position of the U.S. government is that UFOs are not a threat to national security. Yet the agencies involved claim the censored information is vital to national security. From 1947 to 1969, the Air Force conducted Project Blue Book. Staffed with just three people, it studied 12,000 UFO sightings. All but 701 were explained to the military satisfaction. And the group that remained unexplained? It does not contain any pattern of purpose or of consistency that we can relate with any, to any conceivable threat to the United States. The Air Force closed Blue Book in 1969, but project critics weren't satisfied. The first person to head it up, Captain Edward J. Repelt, quit in disgust, wrote his own book and declared that there was something to UFOs, and the Project Blue Book was nothing more than a whitewash. Other government officials, including the senator and two former presidents, have tried unsuccessfully to shed some light on the UFO phenomenon. Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater, President Gerald Ford, and President Jimmy Carter, who actually saw a UFO himself and filed a formal report, have all sought to have top-secret UFO information released to the public. All requests for that information were denied. Cover-up allegations aren't limited to the United States government either. Author Timothy Good claims that governments around the world are keeping UFO information top secret. And in his book, Above Top Secret, he claims only an elite few have access to that information. Because so little of the research is made known to top ministers. One country is bucking that trend. Belgium has acknowledged tracking unidentified, seemingly intelligently controlled craft in its airspace. Radar tapes released by the Air Force show an object jumping from 200 meters to 2,000 meters in one second, a distance of just over a mile. The Belgium Air Force has even put aside a plane to search for the objects. But the attitude of the United States remains very different. UFO experts claim our government is conducting top-secret research into UFOs in the middle of the Nevada desert. South of a dry lake bed known as Area 51 is a place known as S-4, allegedly home to a super-secret government research facility. In the course of our investigation, we found a scientist who says he used to work there. Robert Lazar was shocked when he first discovered what it was he would be working on. I got out of the bus, I was told to walk directly through the hangar, and uh, immediately, uh, even before entering the hangar, you can see the edge of a disc. Uh, this is your classic flying saucer, two inverted pie plates, if you wish, uh, with a segmented 
larger area dome on top. Within minutes of that, I finally realized that this had nothing to do with something the government was producing. And it was quite shocking because everything inside was small. This is a full-size craft, 30, 35 feet in diameter, maybe 40. Uh, but you're looking at, at uh, seats that are you know, 18 inches off the ground, obviously made you know, for, for something smaller. It certainly wasn't made for children to play in. Lazar says there were nine spaceships in all, and he claims to have seen one fly. It began to lift off the ground almost silently. There was a hiss sound, uh, like a corona discharge, if you hear around high voltage systems, uh, accompanied by a faint, it probably wouldn't have been brighter at, at night, a faint uh, blue glow around the bottom. As the craft approached about 30 feet, 20 feet, something like that off the ground, uh, that corona discharge disappeared. Uh, the sound stopped and the craft stood there silently and uh, slowly drifted over to the left and then to the right. The government denies they're testing alien craft at S-4. Lazar no longer works there and nowadays spends his time working on one of his hobbies, jet car racing. He alleges that after he went public, security officers at the base threatened his life. He also says that his employment and military service records have disappeared. Despite repeated requests, the government can't find them. The subcontractor who hired him for the job at S-4 refuses to comment. But a few clues support Lazar's contention that he is a scientist and that he has worked for the government. This W-2 form indicates that he had been employed by the Department of Naval Intelligence. Before his stint at S-4, Lazar claims to have worked at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. Los Alamos officials can't find any record of him. But his name does appear in a laboratory phone book from that time. Reporter George Knapp was able to track down a few of Lazar's colleagues who could confirm parts of his story. But when they talked to Knapp, something strange happened. One after another had, had visits from, from government personnel who basically intimidated or told them to back off, followed them around. There didn't have to be any direct communication where an agent says, you keep talking to this guy, you're going to end up in a river. The message was very clear. Since Lazar's story broke, Area 51 has become a hotbed for UFO sightings. You see that? It just zipped to the left. See it again? While our cameras were there, a bright light appeared in the night sky. Utterly silent, it seemed to float below the mountaintops. Analysis of our videotape proved inconclusive. Those who might know the answers aren't talking. I've been covering organized crime in Las Vegas for, for 10 years, dealing with uh, mob hitmen and mob informants, uh, people who have been in the witness protection program. The fear that is generated by this UFO subject for people who really know about it far outweighs the kind of fear that the mob inspires. I mean, people are more afraid of our government than they are of organized crime. I am exactly sure of what I saw. I know what mainstream science is like. I know what, where physics stands. I know all of that. And this is an extraterrestrial craft. This technology is hundreds and hundreds of years in advance of us. And that's the end of that story. The people we've heard from in this report believe that they have had close encounters of the first, second, third, even fourth kind. Skeptics charge that they're mistaken, that they're misinformed, or at the very worst, just plain crazy. But are we, the human race, so conceited as to believe that we are alone in the universe? Is it possible that in the infinite frontier of space, this speck of intelligent life we call Earth is the only one for sightings, I'm Tim White.